Hey everyone, and welcome to another hemp tip. Today, we'll be showing you how to set up a CO2 monitor and controller combo, as well as a CO2 regulator. Most combo CO2 sensor, monitor, and controllers all function pretty similarly. So let's go over how to set one up. After plugging it in for the first time, ideally you'll want to place the CO2 sensor at the same height as your plant's canopy, since this is the height where most of your plant leaves will get its CO2 from. Be sure not to have the CO2 sensor near the floor or near the ceiling, because CO2 is heavier than air. So if the sensor is too high, the CO2 levels will look a lot lower than they actually are, and if the sensor is too low, the CO2 levels will look a lot higher than what is accessible to your plants. Of course, if your CO2 sensor is built into the monitor itself, then just try and position the CO2 monitor near your plant's canopy height. Last thing to note here is that a lot of the CO2 sensors have an additional light detector built into it. And what this does is that it ensures the CO2 controller never turns on during the night cycle, since plants don't need CO2 when it's dark. So if your CO2 sensor has one of these built into it, make sure that the sensor is then located in the same space as your lighting so that this photo sensor functionality works properly. Now for the CO2 monitor, you'll need to set up two numbers which dictate when the CO2 controller turns on and off. The center number is the ideal CO2 levels you're trying to hit, and the zone is how far off on either direction you're able to tolerate before turning on and off the CO2 controller. So for example, let's say you want to maintain a CO2 level of 500 parts per million, and you're willing to accept a zone of 100. This means that when the CO2 levels reach below 450 parts per million, the CO2 controller will activate, and it'll stay activated until the CO2 levels reach 550 parts per million. And the reason why a zone buffer is important is that it prevents the CO2 controller from constantly turning on and off the moment it reaches above and below the center number. So let's move on to the CO2 regulator, which is a common device used to release the carbon dioxide from a CO2 tank at a set pace anytime it's turned on. First, you'll want to install it onto your CO2 tank, ensuring that the plastic washer is inside the device so that it can create an airtight seal once the metal output is twisted on to the threaded connector. Once it's in place, you can test for any CO2 leaks by first turning the knob on the CO2 tank which will release the CO2 into the regulator, and then put some soapy water where the two pieces are threaded together. If you see any bubbles form, then there's a leak in the connector. Now that the regulator is properly installed, you can use a pinwheel knob to regulate the flow of CO2 from the CO2 tank to the output area on the bottom of the CO2 regulator and the floating ball will let you know the amount of CO2 that is being released in standard cubic feet per hour. The other pressure gauge lets you know how much CO2 is left in the tank. And this should generally be around 800 PSI or so if the tank still has a lot of CO2 left in it. It's important to periodically check the pressure gauge because if the PSI levels get too low, you'll need to replace the tank, or else even if the regulator is 
turned on, no CO2 will be released. Finally, like we noted earlier, CO2 is heavier than air. So ideally, you'll want it to output as high as possible in your grow space so that as it slowly drops, it'll pass through your plant leaves. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch, available at Amazon in print and digital with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.